we have made it to the final segment of the anatomy of a rifle scope series and we're going to be running through the last piece of the puzzle right over here the eyepiece what is the eyepiece and why do we need it so far we've worked our way all the way through the entire rifle scope from front to back and as the name eyepiece suggests it's the last component of the rifle scope that the light passes through before reaching your eye but what does it actually do to that light I have in front of me here a camera lens and you may have wondered what makes a rifle scope different to a camera lens as far as the optical train of lenses goes and the main difference is that a camera lens has everything required to focus the light onto a sensor on the back end. A rifle scope doesn't have that. A rifle scope actually requires one more lens and that lens is your eye. Your eye's job is to focus the light right at the end onto the sensor which is your retina. We call a camera lens a focal system and we call a rifle scope an afocal system. The eyepiece's job is to prepare the image in a way that your eye can see it best. The eyepiece tube houses a series of lenses which focus, magnify and collimate the light to create parallel beams of light that you can almost imagine as a cylinder. The depth of the cylinder would be your eye relief and the diameter of the cylinder would be the exit pupil. Another word for this region would be the eye box and you may hear people saying I like the scope it's got a really forgiving eye box or oh that scope has a really tight eye box. As you zoom in and out your eye relief and exit pupil diameter does change. This is why you should set your cheek piece height and length of pull on your stock when your rifle scope is at max magnification and the eye box is at its smallest point. If you want a longer eye relief and a better apparent field of view you need a larger eyepiece and obviously the sacrifice there is size and weight but sometimes you don't need a long eye relief like in the case of our 10 by 40 and 14 by 50 immersive series rifle scopes which are made for low recoiling guns like air guns they have tiny eyepieces but can still achieve an incredible field of view because the eye relief is so short so it's all a balancing game on the eyepiece you'll also find a diopter that turns in and out. This basically adjusts the focus of the image in front of the eyepiece so that your eye doesn't have to work as hard. This is generally the first thing you do when you mount a rifle scope for the first time. You point it at a featureless background, you look through it and you turn the diopter until the reticle comes clearly into focus for your eye without your eye having to strain. This is a really important component because everybody's eyes are different. The eyepiece is one of the more important lens assemblies in a rifle scope and that's why we often have some pretty wacky looking lenses in here, working together to ensure that all the different wavelengths of light are focused together properly. Remember it's not just a lens, it's a lens system. And you know what? I think that pretty much covers it. Hopefully the series has been helpful in explaining what actually goes on inside a rifle scope both optically and mechanically obviously if you have any more questions please feel free to ask them in the comments down below and hopefully this goes one step further towards helping you make an informed decision next time you need to choose a rifle scope thanks for watching